good evening friends today we are going to talk about the type of diet a diabetic patient should take on hemodialysis i am dr sunil prakash and i am heading the department of nephrology and kidney transplant at blk super specialty hospital new delhi and max hospital gurgaon first i must recognize and thank ready labs to allow us to do this presentation for my dialysis patients especially who are diabetics and who have landed upon dialysis so first we must know that now today at least 40 to 50% people who are having end stage kidney disease that is requiring dialysis is mostly due to diabetes this is the worldwide data 40 to 50% people on dialysis are due to diabetes so diabetes is the biggest cause of dialysis patients other are blood pressure now we know that diabetes is a lifelong disease it has long term complications you live with it and you die with it so it affects the heart coronary artery disease affects the brain brain disease all the arteries of the body especially of the legs and you sometimes see amputation and other things in these patients it affects the eye and the very common cause of blindness but today we are restricting ourselves on its effect on kidney diseases cause diabetic nephropathy and if it lands up to stage 5 it becomes dialysis dependent so diabetic nephropathy today is the most important cause as i said earlier now people who have diabetes and they start on dialysis they are especially susceptible because they have many comorbidities which are described like they have heart problem they have brain problem they have eye problem feet problem but heart problem is very very important and worldwide 50% people who have diabetes die of heart problem even before they land up on dialysis so we have to take special care of the heart of these patients that is the heart of the matter now friends these dialysis diabetic patients are having malnutrition malnutrition means that the nutrition is ineffective and look at the percentage 40 to 70% patients of end stage disease on dialysis are having malnutrition therefore diet plan for these patients have to be made very scrupulously and it is very important for them to have the right diet plan to counter this scourge of massive malnutrition malnutrition does not mean thin even a fat person could be malnourished so a good meal it means that it will cause minimum collection of waste products of urea guanidines amines and will prevent excess fluid you all know that dialysis patient has a propensity to collect water they are always water logged they have edema they have breathing problem because of water in their lung so the good diet must prevent excess water should prevent excess collection of waste products from diet but it should improve the nutrition and the patient should be able to work well that is his functional capacity should be improved the muscles should be preserved because without muscles we cannot move our body to do anything as well as if somebody's nutrition is good they have less chance of getting infection so on one side we have to give them good nutrition but our goal is also to keep their sugars under control all my friends you know that diet in diabetes the blood sugar remaining high is a perennial lifelong problem but let me tell you many a times a patient who lands up on dialysis his sugar start going down and you will find many many patients whose blood sugars are always very very low even if they are not taking insulin or any medicine for that so that has also to be accounted for so when one has kidney disease and one is on dialysis every water and food we take it is very important how much we take what we take is also important and how much we take is also important because it affects our health and if we are doing it correctly it is so much so better for us so what are the food which we would like to be included in your diet now there is no fixed regime that is why i don't like many times the dietitian will give you a piece of paper do this do this do that because every one of you will require some modification and this modification will also change over time when you start a dialysis at that time your sugar may be different your nutrition requirement may be different over time these requirements will change and we have to do the modifications therefore we need renal dietitians or dietitians who are specially trained in dialysis and problems of foods and supplements of our patients so in the eating plan 
like other dialysis diets diabetes diets have to be good nutritious diet tasty diet but there are three things which we have to restrict you all know potassium is a big problem because if potassium become very high they get heart stoppage heart stops in beating and the death occurs so potassium is the most important thing but also they have very high phosphorus in their body because the phosphorus comes in up from our diet and the kidney is the only organ which can throw phosphorus out so if the kidney is not working phosphorus keeps collecting in the body and so does sodium and whenever sodium will collect water will collect so phosphorus sodium potassium are very important and that is why we have to juggle our diet and we have to specially take care of the carbohydrates we eat friends if a person a diabetic person when he starts his diabetic journey and his kidneys are all right the focus is mostly amounting to restriction of fats and carbohydrates because carbohydrates tend to raise the sugars fast these are the foods he can eat a diabetic can eat fruits berries grapes cherries apples plums pineapples even bananas in small amount all vegetables they can eat onions cauliflower turnips green vegetables also they can eat but if there is a potassium problem then they should leach these vegetables by leaching we mean they should cut the vegetable in small pieces and soak them in warm water for 2 3 hours and then change the water so the excess potassium of these greens will go away and then they can be cooked they should take proteins which are very important proteins will come from meats poultry fish eggs pulses and cereals seafood also if unsalted is good carbohydrates you know comes from chapati bread bagel sandwich buns and pasta and other things in indian diets for indians most of the carbohydrates will come from chapati rice dalia and other things and other cereals for drinking water we all know then clear diet sodas can be had tea can be had coffee can be had these diets are in diabetics told to be taken in less amounts because they are very rich in carbohydrates now let me tell you now this is a very tricky statement because once a diabetic patient starts his journey we don't allow him to take starchy vegetables like potato and we don't allow him to take a lot of breads and parathas and all those things but they must continue to take them sometimes they get a wrong notion that they cannot take potato at all or they cannot take breads at all that is wrong they have to take but they have to watch the portions so they can take rice they can take cereals breads pasta fruits juices are normally we don't give but if somebody's potassium is all right then he can take a little bit now and then and all vegetables are permissible depending upon their potassium content of the patient these can be modified so patient should not take these are the items you should totally avoid you must have heard your doctor telling you please don't take coca cola pepsi why because they contain lot of phosphorus and this phosphorus is highly absorbable phosphorus i will allude to that little later so please remember do not take pepsi coca cola etc as far as possible you can just take a sip now and then because they have no nutritive value and on top of it they have very much additive in organic phosphorus which is 100% absorbed and one gets a problem some fruits like avocados and dates and chikus should be avoided canned fruits the problem with canned fruits is that they are not having high potassium so you can have but please remember they have very high sodium you know sodium is put to keep the fruit from getting spoiled so you have to watch the sodium consumption if somebody is already having lot of water and sodium retention then they should take in small quantity now this slide may come as a paradox to my diabetic friends whole wheat bread and whole brown rice are less recommended on dialysis patients why is that so otherwise we know brown bread whole wheat rice is more nutritious they have vitamins but friends they also have very high content of phosphorus and potassium so instead of brown bread brown rice whole wheat bread white bread and white rice is preferred buckwheat is a good alternative kotu is a good alternative because this white bread and white rice will have less potassium and less phosphorus so although it may sound quite exotic but dialysis patient we recommend white rice and white bread instead of whole wheat bread because of the issues of phosphorus and potassium 
bananas people feel are not indicated but i will say they must be taken but in half of one banana and if somebody is having a big potassium problem then he may not take it but banana is as good or as bad as an apple in dairy products we allow about half a liter of milk or milk products for these patients but if you take lot of milk then there is a problem with phosphorus and potassium and that should be avoided we avoid orange juice because it contains potassium as well as vitamin c dialysis patient cannot take lot of vitamin c because then their oxalate become high and they form stone so but they can take a orange solid orange or solid lemon they can take if there is no potassium problem once in a while they can take juice but it will be added in their water content processed meats should be taken in small quantity so dairy milk you can take up to half liter or 600 ml every day but it will include your milk curd and paneer then please never ever take pickles and papads as far as possible because they are very very high in sodium and they will cause thirst they sodium logging water logging and potassium if you want to take potatoes and sweet potatoes you can take them but first you must leach them as i said earlier and then you can take 100 grams of potatoes and sweet potatoes because otherwise these potatoes have very good nutritive value they are very rich in other minerals and vitamins and good carbohydrate content apricots avoided chips and crackers and these things are waste even normal people should avoid as far as possible because they contain very high salt and even the medium in which they are fried may be containing trans fats so they should be avoided and they also contain potassium so for dialysis patient we don't recommend them friends then how the meal is to be planned concentrate on this side please remember that before dialysis there were always some calorie restrictions for the patients because their diabetes had to be controlled but you will find that a patient of diabetes once he lands up on dialysis his sugar problem will reduce in fact when the kidney stops becoming bad the control of sugar is very good and many people will remember that as their kidneys are becoming worse their blood sugar content became all right so why i am telling you this thing i am telling you because once you are on dialysis the restriction of calories will be eased and you will be allowed much higher calories for example a person with normal weight can eat up to 1600 to 1800 calories and you can take about 260 grams of carbohydrate protein and good amounts but fat restriction should remain so let us see a particular diet a person can take he can take in the morning a cup of tea or coffee with some milk two slices of bread or he can take idlis daliya upma the dhokla and things like that and we can always interchange these diets there should not it's not that you should to take bread every day or you have to take chapati every day you can take daliya you can take oats you can take upma and so on and so forth with some chat then at around noon he can take a cup of fruit or something then at lunch rice one one and a half cup or two small chapatis with rice dal sabji beans curd and some oil two to three spoons of oil should be used in this lunch in the evening time he can have a tea or coffee with some puffed bhujia chana some 6 to 8 peanuts he can have 4 to 6 cashew nuts he can have with tea or coffee then at dinner time again he can have rice wheat daliya chapati non vegetarian people can have 60 grams of fish or meat or he can have dal one cup dal of 30 35 grams he can have vegetable dry or wet vegetable and curd or raita and again two spoons of oils are permitted at night time he can have a small fruit or walnuts or peanuts so this is just one example now what is important is what are healthy foods like idli with low fat dosa with low fats minimum oil upma but if you take put lot of fat and oil in this then they become bad meal similarly you can have dal sprouts chicken tikka which is grilled not not fried it's not oily fried punjabi chicken that's not good you can have fish tikkas with less oil similarly all vegetables are allowed but minimum of coconut and minimum of oil if you put lot of coconut lot of oil lot of potato it is not so good 1% milk or low skim milk should be taken in dairy products and you should have full fruits please avoid juices because that will increase your water content and that will increase your potassium and low fat milks are good
so what are the tips in changing diet as i said earlier we should avoid brown rice and we should do the rice in more water and then steep the water it will remo- remove the excess fat starch and similarly you can instead of rice sometimes you can use dalia you can eat wheat you can eat barley jowar ragi so and you can use combination of all these cereals and if there is no potassium problem then rice should not be washed many times but if there is a potassium problem then some leaching has to be done it is important that we can make good nutritious food without much oil but if you have to use oil i recommend four spoons of oil should be used every day one spoon could be of asli ghee two spoons could be of olive oil or uh, sarso ka tel mustard oil they are very good and you can cook in them but we must also learn to cook on uh, these uh, fat free means by using of non stick pans and use some milk etc which is skim and snacks should be avoided especially fried snacks like samosas chips they are no good and if you are eating meat then eat lean meats avoid the fat which comes with the meat portions egg whites are better than whole eggs especially for cardiac patients and vegetarians are always at an advantage but sometimes for protein problem they may need to take tofu soya bean nuts pulses etc otherwise they may become protein deficient i personally feel that being a vegetarian brings and some advantage to longevity and the reasons are it's ecological thing some religious issue compassion for animals non violence and economically also vegetarian food is cheaper by eating vegetarian food there is less heart disease less cancer less constipation less bowel disease person lives longer less bone disease less fattiness less obesity less hypertension and certainly better endurance it is the myth that eating non vegetarian foods makes you more strong if you are eating correctly vegetarian food is very good it will control your hypertension hypertension is less one third less than the people who are taking non veg vegetarian food reduces low blood pressure both in normal people and in people with high blood pressure cholesterol level friends are also low in vegetarian foods and it's a good idea to eat vegetarian foods more because your fat content is low saturated content is low cholesterol is low and you have more carbohydrates and vitamins more minerals but certainly i agree there is a protein problem with vegetarian foods vegetarian foods have less protein than non vegetarian foods so if somebody is a meat eater he may continue to eat meat he may continue to eat eggs but he must try to increase his vegetarian content also because cancer rates are also low 25 to 50% people who are eating more vegetables and fruits they have low risk of lung breast colon bladder stomach mouth and other cancers but it has to be under careful guidance a well planned vegetarian diet will be useful before dialysis patient has landed up on dialysis it slows the progression of a diabetic to kidney disease and dialysis it has been shown that plant protein increase survival decrease protein loss and reduces the kidney damage compared to non veg now a little bit about salt india take more salt possibly because we are living in a hot humid climate but recommendation for dialysis patients is to take 5 g salt which is roughly one small teaspoon full flat you should take one level teaspoon flat salt in 24 hour of diet just by salt reduction bp comes down by 5 to 10 mm and the risk of paralysis heart attacks and all deaths are reduced significantly then cooking medium i have already so told that you use 3 to 4 spoon per day and you can divide it into this way one spoon of desi ghee which should be pure ghee then one spoon of groundnut or safflower and two spoons of sarso or, or olive sarso will be cheaper olive will be expensive dalda or trans fats should to be totally avoided they are really really very bad for us then a word about how much calories do we need to take this is in reference to people who are obese and who are on diabetes five feet person should weigh 50 kg that is the ideal weight calculation and for every 1 inch extra so for example five feet 1 inch person should weigh 52 kg five foot 6 inch person should weigh 62 kg now persons like us need 25 kg for 1 kg body weight 
therefore a 60 kg man will need 1500 kilograms but dialysis patients will need more calories especially if they are more active but otherwise also because they lose some nutrition in dialysis also so a fat person on dialysis if he wants to lose weight should reduce his calorie intake by less than 300 kilograms per day and increase some activity in that way he will reduce his weight gradually let us see how first we must know the amount of calories each food has one flat teaspoon has 20 calories two chapatis two breads have 100 calories one paratha you see has 200 calories so if you take one paratha you eat 200 calories if you take chapatis without ghee you eat half the calories so one paratha is nearly having calories of four chapatis so it is prudent if a person is fat to take less of parathas then one should take dal 150 calories vegetables not much and curd and all those things are not so much but obviously chicken will have more calories than dal then look at these food items if you are eating burgers we get 600 chole bhature 450 calories kaju groundnuts if you are taking too much they are very very rich in calories chaat alu tikki 400 calories dosha 400 calories so wherever their food is fried gulab jamun 350 and ice cream we take two scoops 400 calories so basically any person having weight problem should avoid these but people who are not having weight problems who can sometimes take them and these are the food items obese patients who want to control their diabetes also can take ad lib meaning they can take lots of portions of this for example cabbage cauliflower 100 gram of only 25 calories so even if you take two three categories of cabbage cauliflower you will not take much Kira kakadi has less calories Loki, tore kadu you know have less calories watermelon more little bit more but not so much but obviously grapes and will have more calories but you can take all of them and even potatoes do not have so much of calories as it is blamed for so i say that in moderation potato banana and all these things should be taken now we always have a problem with potassium in dialysis patient and this can be achieved by the kidneys in a normal person but if the kidneys are bad then there is always a problem and we have to take diets which are low in potassium for a normal person we recommend nearly 3 gram of potassium per day but in dialysis patient it has to be less magnesium also is very important but it is mistaken magnesium comes from nuts grains fish vegetables and if somebody's magnesium is low it causes more inflammation heart disease calcification of the vessels and if you take more magnesium your blood pressure may come down but it should not cross excess limits so roughly we recommend magnesium to be taken about 240 milligram per day and that is the right portion but in kidney patient it becomes a problem so how do we decide that if you take a lot of cow milk the protein content goes up so we can if we are having need to take milk and if the protein content is already coming from other sources then cow milk could be replaced with rice milk, chestnut milk, oat milk because they have only 0.2 to 0.3 gram per 100 gram of protein and here they have more than 3 gram per kilo. Similarly, bread, cereals have high proteins whereas cooked rice, corn flour, ara root, cooked sweet potato, cooked potato have less protein. So if somebody needs to reduce his protein, they can use this formula. But I must warn you, dialysis patient, we recommend them to take at least if they are weighing 60 kilograms they must take 70 gram of protein friends i have to warn you against phosphorus you must have seen dialysis patient their phosphorus is already high and your doctor is worried about phosphorus why so because phosphorus comes in many forms but the most dangerous phosphorus is the preservative and the additive salt in preserved processed foods Phosphorus is added to increase the quality, color, texture, flavor and maintain the shelf life of the food is increased. In western countries, every day people are taking 500 milligram of phosphorus. And the problem is that this inorganic phosphorus in processed foods is 100% absorbed. And that creates very high phosphorus level and a problem. For example, the phosphorus of chapatis, dal is absorbed only 20 to 40%. Milk and meat is absorbed only to 40 to 60 percent. But Coca Cola, preservative and fancy food, preserved foods, 
you see the adoption of phosphorus it is 100 percent so whenever additives are used in food of dialysis patients they will get high phosphorus content and that is why they are told not to drink pepsi and all those things so friends toward the end i want to say that if the nutritional intervention is done with intelligence better management of uremia is done better acids are controlled in the body sodium potassium are better controlled their bones are better saved they don't get osteoporosis by right food less water and salt retention will occur and if it is started early in life depending upon the stage of renal failure when can certainly delay the onset of dialysis this is the nutshell a patient not on dialysis normal people also should use this pyramid in their diet they should take five to six portions biggest portion should be of grains vegetables beans then three to five portions should be of vegetables two portions of fruits milk two to three portions meat one to two portions please avoid fat sweet and alcohol they should be used very very sparingly friends some will live to eat and some will eat to live we have to make a choice because we are what we eat our eating habits will determine our way to life and the way to our life will determine the way to die and nobody wants to die in a very complicated and a bad way and lot of morbidity we have seen especially in these corona times so it is prudent that we eat carefully we eat the right food we eat the right habit and that is all i have to say